Jackson kicking out of that stage dive and just chucking Krim Rocker out of the ring. And what does he have in mind here? Omar stopping to catch his... Forget about stopping to catch his breath. I was wrong. Huge suicide elbow there. Let's get good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to GFW Pulse. On this week's episode, we are going to have the debut of Team Kawaii, uh, as well as some other great matchups and segments. Let's get underway. From my understanding, Omar Jackson is headed out to the ring right now. Ladies and gentlemen, entering the arena at this time, it is the Pitbull Omar Jackson. Omar out here with some very choice words for Xavier Shamrock. A little bit of a slight to Victor Wolf there as well. and gentlemen entering the arena at this time the essence of excellence Xavier Shamrock look, look at really X X is trying to to claim that Omar is being selfish by attempting to tear him limb from limb uh, it seems like X is maybe just avoiding a confrontation here with Omar Jackson, and who can blame him? Ladies and gentlemen, entering the arena at this time, escorted by Victor Wolf. This is the Pitbull Omar Jackson. This is glory. Ladies and gentlemen, entering the arena at this time, their opponents, escorted by Xavier Shamrock. This is the Kentucky Killer, Krim Rocker, and they are House of Wolves. And this matchup between Omar Jackson and Krim Rocker about to get underway. Nice hip toss opener from Omar Jackson. Just taking his time here, building up. Beautiful chop. Oh, that wasn't anything about taking time there. That nice pullback lariat nearly ripped Krim Rocker out of his trunks. Kick to the gut followed by a huge, huge hook. But Krim Rocker whipping. Oh, and he gets nothing for that Irish whip off the ropes. Just takes a knee to the gut. Krim, though, with that elbow to the point of the four, uh, temple of Omar Jackson, but Omar getting that nice running stomp on the grounded Krim. Krim with a push down here, trying to potentially take the base away from Omar, and now that he's got him down, he's gonna work that back over with stomps. Krim has a wide variety of maneuvers targeting the back and spine region, so I won't be surprised if he tends to focus his assault there. Omar Jackson here kicking the leg of Krim, potentially trying to take away some of the aerial offense that he's known for. Krim missing with a headbutt here, but does get that double axe handle and another stomp to the lower back from Krim Rocker, followed by another double axe handle. Looks like Omar's recovered before Krim can capitalize on the ground, though. Omar whipping Krim off the ropes, jumping over Krim Rocker is Omar Jackson, an absolute freak athlete here. But Krim staying in control of this thing so far. Omar managing to counter that brain buster and... No, I, I thought he might dump Krim to the outside there, but it looks like Krim managed to save himself from that fate. Although realistically, going to the outside may have been in Krim Rocker's favor here. Krim throwing lefts and rights, and Krim getting the better of that striking exchange over the freak athlete Omar Jackson. And now Krim, oh, doesn't get anything for that, that dash off the ropes there. Oh, he, he got something all right. He got a pullback lariat and a stomp from Omar Jackson. Krim just taking some heavy, heavy hits here, but managing to fight back is Krim Rocker. 
Ouch. That, that stalling, jumping brain buster right there could not have felt good to take by Krim Rocker. But Krim with that kick to the guts and now a counter Russian leg sweep from Omar Jackson. This match very back and forth so far. Omar Jackson showing us once again, though, why he is a freak athlete. Krim, though, double axe handle again and a headbutt to the back of Omar Jackson's head, followed by a knee to the ribs. Krim definitely showing a advanced striking game here working over that midsection of Omar Jackson however Krim in the wrong part of town right now does go for a light tube but wait a minute oh Omar Jackson causing him to drop the light tube and suplexing him on top of it I'll be surprised if Krim Rocker isn't bleeding all over huge double underhook suplex on the outside and a kick to the gut Krim is just being brutalized he is in the wrong part of town for this right now and a huge dragon suplex on the outside but Krim has managed to recover he is back in the ring here Big knee to the gut is Krim Rocker putting Omar Jackson on the mat. And now an elbow from Omar Jackson to counter whatever Krim had going on there. Krim being unable to build momentum here. Huge drop kick from Omar Jackson. It's not often we see a man his size do a back flipping drop kick, folks. And a nice exploder suplex from Omar Jackson leaves Krim laid out. And I have to say, I... I I feel like Krim had a better footing here in the early running of the match, but he's starting to lose his grip a little bit. Omar showing that he has the strength, he has the ability. Oh, but Krim with that very sly and quick Enziguri to gain some control. Krim going there potentially for a rocker dropper, but instead gets countered. And now Omar Jackson with a series of jabs just lower that, just dropping Krim Rocker to the mat. Krim being picked up here one more time and a huge belly to belly suplex from Omar Jackson. And another left hand to Krim. You have to wonder here if Krim is potentially just playing possum though. Uh, Krim Rocker, a very unique individual, very unique style. Big backdrop there from Krim Rocker, and it looks like he is potentially back in control of this matchup. Irish whip off the ropes and a huge hooking lariat there, and Krim is letting it out just roaring at the crowd big step up and Zaguri again and Omar Jackson seems like he's maybe a little bit rocked here now and a big big double chop to the chest from Krim Rocker there that was beautiful but Omar Jackson fighting back trying to get a little bit of space here so that he can get back in this fight huge lariat it's gonna follow it up here up with though oh and another one of those vicious dragon suplexes and I'm not sure how Krim is even standing here wait a minute Northern Lights one two no! Krim manages to kick out at the very last second. Krim Rocker here, resilient as ever. And another Northern Light suplex. However, he landed Krim there with his feet under the ropes, allowing Krim Rocker to escape. And now you have to wonder what Krim has in mind, dragging Omar Jackson towards that corner. And Omar countering here with a pullback lariat. And yeah, Krim is laid out one more time. And I'm actually surprised that we're not seeing Omar go to the top here. It does look like there's a little bit of blood leaking out from under the headband of Omar Jackson, though. Perhaps that happening during that light tube uh, tussle on the outside and us just not being able to see it due to that headband. Krim Rocker countering that double underhook suplex there and then following it up with a kick to the gut. And the way that Omar Jackson is, is being left groggy and sort of crumbling from these gut kicks, you have to think that maybe Krim Rocker's assault on the, the lower body and midsection is actually working. Omar Jackson here lifting Krim up, big bear hug there, but Krim able to grab that rope and Game Goon forced to break it. And now... Omar working a lariat here. I, I still feel like Omar's midsection may be damaged right now. And a Russian leg sweep, that'll put more damage on that back and midsection. I feel like Krim is maybe working for a slow build here. Oh, and a huge Yakuza kick to the chest there just lays out Omar Jackson. And what is that? Oh, a spinning body or a spinning spine buster there. I, I guess that's a spin out spine buster. Spin out Uranagi could be either, really. Omar Jackson here, uh, a desperation, belly-to-belly -belly suplex, but not able to get up and recover from it. Just left groggy there, and now Krim is back in control here. Huge lariat to Omar Jackson, and Krim going up top here. What's he got in mind? Stage dive, a stage drive from Krim Rocker, and the cover. One, two, three. No, he did not get him. Omar Jackson kicking out of that stage dive and just chucking Krim Rocker out of the ring. And what does he have in mind here? Omar stopping to catch his... Forget about stopping to catch his breath. I was wrong. Huge suicide elbow there into Krim Rocker. And Krim is laid out. However, Omar is in the wrong part of town. That is the side of the ring that he does not want to be on. Krim Rocker whipping him into the barricade. And now X sure to get involved here. And X there functioning mainly just as a body block. But now Krim working Omar Omar Jackson 
over on the outside here. Oh wow, Krim with another one of those big spin out spine busters. That's that's what I'm calling that right there. No, spin out Uranagi is a little bit better. I like that. Let's call it a spin out Uranagi. Uh, and a Russian leg sweep from Omar Jackson here, trying to regain some control in this matchup. A kick to the thigh, two kicks to the thigh, potentially trying to prevent Krim from going up top again. And could it be? There it is. Show's over from Krim Rocker. Gotta be a cover here. One, two, three. No, Krim Rocker doesn't even get two and a half on that one. Laying Omar out with that lariat is Krim Rocker, and you have to wonder how it feels for Krim Rocker now, having worked that back over this entire matchup, and then hitting the shows over, and Omar Jackson kicks out of it because he is simply that good. He is the freak athlete. And Omar Jackson throwing Krim out of the ring, bouncing off the ropes, and another one of these huge suicide elbows, and at this point, I'm not sure how Krim is even conscious. And Krim, what's he got in mind here? Oh, this huge lifting Canadian backbreaker here just stretching Omar Jackson on the outside and dropping him. Oof. And Omar Jackson with a big American hook there, laying Krim out on the outside and going to the center of the ring, just taking a moment to catch his breath here is Omar Jackson. I'm actually surprised that Krim hasn't gone for any weapons during their time on the outside. Another one of those freak backflipping drop kicks from Omar Jackson, one of the largest competitors here in GFW next to Nero Sin. And a double underhook butterfly suplex there. And Krim Rocker with an eye rake to buy himself space, but it doesn't buy him much. And both men are exchanging blows here again. Oh, wow. The Pitbull raging out there doesn't matter. Krim Rocker just too resilient gets right back up and hits that lariat. The Kentucky Killer absolutely refusing to stay down here. And an elbow to the temple one more time. Bouncing off the ropes is Krim Rocker. Big double chop there. And wait a minute, doesn't get to capitalize Omar Jackson with that counter kick to the face. This matchup has been so back and forth at this point, guys. Whipping Krim off the ropes is Omar Jackson. And then Krim with a blow of blow to the low regions right there to try to potentially slow Omar Jackson down and a huge set of double elbows to counter whatever Krim had in mind and Omar just taking a moment to breathe and you have to wonder here who's gonna win this matchup we've seen Omar pull out all the stops but he hasn't really gained a, an advantage yet Another one of those spin-out Uranagis from Krim Rocker here and he's going up top again are we gonna see another stage dive? A standing stage dive from Krim Rocker that could absolutely be it one, two, three. Krim Rocker getting the victory in this one on one matchup via standing stage dive. Beautiful finish. And uh, you have to wonder if Omar Jackson is feeling a little bit, uh, well, I mean, right now he looks like he's feeling a little bit unconscious. Ladies and gentlemen, entering the arena at this time, the Progress Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Nero Sin. Nero here, of course, slandering the Progress Heavyweight title. Uh, that that's absolutely great. I, I appreciate that, Nero. Nero as of late, yeah, yeah, there you go, thanks, screw you too, buddy. Nero as of late, very intent on ruining the partnership we've been working on with Progress, and his latest attempt is to capture their title, which I, I am terrified. But wait a minute, before Nero can do anything too crazy, ladies and gentlemen, entering the arena at this time, the Calamari Catch King, Chris Brooks. Brooks telling Nero like it is, it's really not a good idea to start trashing a title you haven't even defended yet. I mean, are you really a champion if you haven't defended it yet? <laughs> it is a little bit tacky. I, I, I agree with Brooks here. It is a little bit tacky to try to crap on a belt you haven't actually defended. And now a, a rematch request from Chris Brooks. I think that's probably going to fall on deaf ears, though. Oh, no. What does Nero have in mind here? No, 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 that's, that's not acceptable, Nero. If he does that, I... If he does that, he will ruin the deal with progress. Yeah, there we go, you tell him, Chris. Oh, no. 
Oh no, this is a really bad idea. Chris, don't don't accept this challenge. This is a really bad idea. This is not going to be a fair fight, Chris. No, no, no. Don't make a deal with the devil here, Chris. It's really not a good... Chris, please. I, I'll be I'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. I, I can't sit around here and just watch Chris Brooks get led into this trap. Sorry about that, folks. I had to step away for a moment to go have a word with Chris Brook and get that all figured out. It looks like we're going to be having a big eight-man tag team elimination match on Mayhem this week. Uh, the winner of that match will decide some very, very important things. Needless to say, I am not rooting for Team Nero. But as I understand it, Team Kawaii is ready to enter the arena and make their debut. So we're going to go to the ring now. Ladies and gentlemen, entering the arena at this time, Team Kawaii! And their opponents for this matchup, containing both the first GFW Heavyweight Champion and the current GFW Heavyweight Champion, this is Blood and Gore. Ladies and gentlemen, the debut of Team Kawaii versus Blood and Gore is underway. Irish Whip here from Marcus Moonchild, countered by a knee lift from Alex G. Marcus with an arm drag here. Team Kawaii hoping to make a big, big splash in the tag team scene here versus Blood and Gore, a team consisting of the Alex G and, of course, our very first GFW heavyweight champion and longest reigning at this point, El Fuego Negra. Unfortunately, they are being managed by Evil Miss, our current heavyweight champion, and we don't know how that's going to factor into this matchup. However, Team Kawaii being joined by Panda in the corner. Panda, for those of you do, who do not know, is, of course, Panic, who has been made to wear a panda headband by Marcus Moonchild after winning their matchup last week. Marcus winning a hardcore match that is basically Panda's forte, forcing Panda to wear that headband. And now Kana trying to regain control of this matchup, but it looks like Alex G gonna tag in El Fuego, and it already we're seeing the influence of Evil Miss here as there is a table chunk in the ring on the side of Blood and Gore, and now just both Alex G and El Fuego working down Kana here for a moment. Kana managing to grab a hold of El Fuego though, hitting that, that quick body slam here. 
I'm surprised she didn't go for a tag there to Marcus after taking the sort of double team beating she was taking. I would have gone for that. And now El Fuego going to the neck twist on Kana. It looks like El Fuego and Alex G very much on the same page here, stylistically. Uh, El Fuego being whipped into the ropes and bam, huge lariat from Marcus Moonchild followed by that spinning leg lock. Marcus bouncing off the ropes now though, and El Fuego missing with that big cross body, but not missing with that eye poke. Arm drag though from Marcus to regain control, and another spinning leg lock, just gonna work that leg down. And now Marcus working that shoulder block, or rather that uh, arm ringer shoulder block. And now El Fuego sends Marcus to the corner, but it is Marcus's corner, perhaps not the best place to send Marcus Moonchild here, knowing that Kana is waiting for him over there. Big knee lift counter from Marcus, and now just gonna go ahead and throw a stomp on the midsection of El Fuego before tagging in Kana. Both Marcus and Kana are heading to the, op the opposing corner, but now everybody is in the ring and things are just breaking down. Big DDT on Fuego by Marcus, who is not the legal man, and Alex G with a low blow to the groin while the chaos is going on, so Game Goon doesn't catch it. Alex G with that fireman's carry into that running double stomp there. Kana's midsection has got to be hurting after that combination. And now just working Kana over with that side headlock is Alex G. Alex G doing a very good job here of slowing the momentum for Team Kawaii. Team Kawaii very fast paced, very striking based. And Alex G is doing his best to sort of ground them and keep them from really building that, that speed up. And now a double team from Team Kawaii. Oh, here it is. They call this boosted gear, folks. Wham! To the chin. Absolutely beautiful. One. I I'm not sure how Alex kicked out of that even at one, but that that's insane. Alex showing a ridiculous amount of perseverance there. And now just stomping Marcus in the corner and grinding that foot into Marcus's throat. Gotta be a tag here to El Fuego. And this is something that Blood and Gore do so well, guys. If you really pay attention, they isolate their opponents in their corner and just work them over. It's something they really have built an, a proficiency for over time. Oh, and here we go. Boosted gear again, this time on El Fuego. I can't... Oh, <laughs> wow. That is devastating. And Mark is not going for a pinfall this time. Instead, that rolling half crab there. Marcus Moonchild, once again, vision impairment may be a thing, but once he gets his hands on you, you do not know what is coming. El Fuego here going for a cover, and Evil Miss sliding a barbed wire bat into the ring on the side of Blood and Gore. Definitely not the kind of thing we want to see in this matchup. Kana and El Fuego exchanging blows here. El Fuego gets the better of it, sending Kana dropping on top of that table. Fortunately, she did not land on the barbed wire bat, though. One, two, Marcus coming to break that pinfall up. And now Kana working that side headlock with some head uh, or some punches there. Marcus lifting El Fuego up so that Kana could kick the crap out of him. That had to have hurt. Double kicks to the midsection. And now Kana tagging in Marcus, and all heck is breaking loose again. All four competitors in the ring here. El Fuego and <laughs> I, I don't even know what's going on. And a huge shooting star press from Marcus on top of the table and the barbed wire bat. But Alex managing to kick out at two. And now a snap suplex from Alex. But I think Alex actually got the worst of that based on his landing. And now Marcus fighting out of whatever Alex was planning and back up top is Marcus Moonchild huge shooting star press But in the wrong corner and oh, Almost getting it there El Fuego sort of being trapped between the referee and the the pinning predicament But not trapped enough to not hit that low blow on Marcus Moonchild who then takes a snap suplex on top of that barbed wire bat and the fact that Marcus is not bleeding is amazing to me right now. All four competitors in the ring off of that double tag one more time. And now El Fuego taking a moment just to show off here after laying out Kana. And what's this? Boston, or not Boston Crab, but a, uh... <laughs> wow. Come on, good. Camel Clutch. I apologize for that, folks. It's early for me. Camel Clutch right there from El Fuego. And now Marcus is being dragged over, or I'm sorry, El Fuego is being dragged over by Marcus and positioned on top of that table and Kana just stomping the heck out of El Fuego while he's down. And now, are we going to see another boosted gear here? No, it looks like El Fuego has countered that predicament and is now working a simple neck twist on Marcus in their corner. Once again, this is the goal of Blood and Gore here to slow things down. But wait a minute, Marcus now is, is right next to Alex, who's doing nothing as he sets up for this huge leaping dropkick. And and now I, I almost wonder if there's a bit of a, a, a lack of care on Alex's part for his tag team partner there. That was just brutal. And now uh, Marcus fighting out of whatever El Fuego was planning. Alex got a hold of him, though. 
you know, realistically, El Fuego is on his way down. Perhaps Alex just sort of letting El Fuego potentially take that that loss there. I, I don't know, man. That that was not how I would treat my partner. But Blood and Gore functions very differently from many many tag teams and factions. And a huge leapfrog from Alex G here, followed by that beautiful kitchen sink. Marcus's midsection has got to be... No, don't accept a handshake from Alex G. Don't you know better? Alex G with that handshake into the armbar here could get him, but no, Kana's in to break it up before stomping Alex G. And now Alex is put in the corner by Kana, and Marcus going to capitalize here. Ten punches, maybe more. Looks like a little bit less. Alex staggering out of the corner, and here is Kana. Freshly tagged in by Marcus Moonchild, and Marcus with that big, big double knee breaker, and uh, Kana's going to drag... Alex out here, what she have in mind? Oh, wow, that, that's something to have in mind. A huge kick to the head of Alex G. And now Kana with the Kana lock. Could this be it? Kana with the Kana lock. Here comes El Fuego to break it up. Marcus taken out, and El Fuego manages to break Kana off, and now just wrenching on the neck of Kana here. What's this binding suplex from Alex G? But Marcus is not the legal man, so that's not going to do much for him. And now Kana with this, oh, huge series of kicks to the midsection of Alex G. And you have to wonder if she's not just going to set up for that Kana lock one more time and end this thing. But wait a minute, what's she got in mind? Kana going for a running corner move, doesn't get it. Alex G attempting to snap suplex her there, but Marcus breaking him off. And now Marcus tagged in by Kana. This matchup so far has been absolutely brutal. Uh, and here we go, boosted gear again from Team Kawaii, while Evil, or rather El Fuego, just watches on this time. Perhaps a little comeuppance for Alex G not interrupting that dropkick earlier in the match. Fuego counter or covering here one, doesn't get even a two count as Kana is in to break it up. And now Kana working over Alex G, but Alex G getting a front face lock. And wait a minute, what is this? Marcus Moonchild absolutely climbing El Fuego here. Is he going to get the submission? El Fuego trapped in that armbar, unable to escape. Manages to break the feet loose. Or feet loose. And now El Fuego off the ropes while Kana hits a brain buster on Alex in the background. But El Fuego managing to gain control, face locking Marcus and bringing him over to these weapons. Uh, puts him down. What's he got in mind here? Oh, and there we go. The black flame flip. And you know what? I, I wouldn't be surprised if he got the pin here, but I think he got a bad landing there, guys. I think when he landed, his back slammed on that barbed wire bat. And now Marcus with that double knee buster, sending El Fuego crashing on top of the table again. And what's he got in mind here? Marcus potentially looking for crossfire there, but Kana not, not being on the same page, scoops up El Fuego. And now El Fuego just mocking Kana before that big drop kick there. Kana not taking it lightly though, huge head kick sends El Fuego to the mat and both competitors collapse. This match has been absolutely exhausting for everybody involved. Middle kicks here by Kana working over both El Fuego and Alex G. Kana just being brutal there. That was absolutely amazing. And now off the ropes is Kana with that huge drop kick to the midsection of Alex G. And now Alex is going to go for a quick cover here on the exhausted Kana. One, two, doesn't quite get a two count there. Marcus was already in the ring to break things up anyway. And now leapfrogging over Kana is Alex G. Here we go again. Oh, and a huge elbow sending Kana crashing down on top of those foreign objects. And now Alex G with that elbow drop. One, two. Three. No, does not get her, but El Fuego does get the Enziguri in the background. And now what is this? Alex G with the go to sleep and a cover. One, two, three. No, Kana refusing to stay down here. Absolutely showing a ridiculous amount of drive to stay in this matchup. And now Marcus Moonchild with that counter cutter on Alex G. And Kana's got something in mind, gonna whip Alex into the corner. What's she gonna do here? Oh, are we gonna see a stomp? Yes, we are. Kana just stomping a mud hole in Alex G. And in is Marcus Moonchild. Perhaps another boosted gear here doesn't look like it. Kana sending Alex to his corner now. And what's this? A double team here. Kana gonna whip Marcus into Alex G. And Marcus goes for the hip attack, but misses, bouncing off the turnbuckle. That has gotta hurt. His lower back just exploded against that top turnbuckle cover. And now, wait a minute though, Marcus managing to fight off the double team from Blood and Gore, and a drop toe hold from Alex G gonna put him back on the ground, giving El Fuego a chance to recover in this matchup. But what is this? Once again, Marcus is climbing. El Fuego here could get him if Alex doesn't break it up, but Alex manages to get in and save the match. Marcus not giving up though, rolling through with that half Boston Crab, and this could be it as well. But wait, no, Alex not gonna break it up this time. And El Fuego managing to escape there somehow. 
Also resisting another boosted gear there is El Fuego and uh, Marcus coming off the ropes cross body, but get, Game Goon is distracted by Evil Miss. That could have been a three count right there, but Evil Miss is distracting the referee and they're getting no count for it at all because of it. Huge series of strikes that are missed or evaded there and now Marcus back in control with that double knee buster tagging in Kana. You have to think they're going for boosted gear here, but it doesn't look like they're going to get it necessarily. Wait a minute, Kana countering that Brain Buster with a Brain Buster of her own. And now Kana is firmly back in control of this matchup. Kana Lock locked in. This has got to be it. Absolutely has to be. There is no way El Fuego can... Wait a minute, El Fuego survived. I mean, there is a reason that El Fuego was our first heavyweight champion and our longest running cha heavyweight champion at this point. Big kick to the back of the head from, from Kana here. That kick, absolutely brutal. It's the one you don't see that hurts you. And a hip attack there to add a little bit of oomph to that shot. Dropping El Fuego in the center of the ring is Kana. And another one of those big spinning back kicks to the head. El Fuego here doesn't want any more. He's, he's going to tag out. He is not ready for Kana. But Alex G thinks he is here, perhaps. And a kick to the back of the knee here. Alex G potentially trying to take that vertical base away from Kana. We've seen him try to grind it out here. One, two, three. No, Kana kicking out of that roll-up. And, and Fuego here, of course, taking a moment to, to shrug. Fuego absolutely one of the most animated heels on our roster. Likes to take a little time in the middle of his matches to showboat. It actually tends to cost him, though, like it might right here. Kana tagging in Marcus Moonchild, but then Alex getting a side headlock. Marcus saving Kana, and here it is. Roll through Half Crab, but wait a minute. Evil is distracted by Game Goon, and here is El Fuego to break up that submission. Evil has been absolutely instrumental in Blood and Gore staying alive in this matchup. And now Marcus with that pulling pile driver here. But wait a minute, El Fuego stops Kana and a huge kick to the face from El Fuego to Kana, preventing Marcus, who was distracted there, from actually capitalizing. And now a binding suplex. Marcus being pinned on top of that table, but kicks out at the brink, almost there at the three count. And what is this? Marcus climbing. Alex G here got an arm bar of his own, and that is it. Game Goon has called for the bell. Alex G has submitted. That was absolutely brutal. That win by Team Kawaii was absolutely brutal there. Marcus Moonchild, a very dangerous opponent. Of course, he does have that visual impairment issue we talk about, but at the same time if he gets his hands on you there's a pretty good chance he's gonna take your arm home with him uh great win for marcus moonchild there folks what wait uh ladies and gentlemen I i'm getting reports from the back that marcus moonchild has been found unconscious in his dressing room uh it wow it, it appears we do have footage of the attack though that occurred so we're gonna go to that footage right now Oh my, that, le ladies and gentlemen, I, we, we don't know who the attacker was, nobody quite recognizes that, that outfit, but, uh, you can be sure that we're going to be looking into this, Kana is of, cure, of course furious over this whole incident, and I can understand why, uh, we will, we will definitely have more on that tomorrow for Mayhem, or rather the day after for Mayhem, so make sure to tune in and check that out, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button, if you want to see more of this awesome content, or anything on the channel, ranging from 4X to Fire Pro Wrestling to visual novels now, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button down there and make sure to ding that bell notification because every time you ding that bell notification, a mystery attacker is discovered and found out and we will find out who that attacker was on Mayhem. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!